Nope, got one more. Oh, okay. I just got it. And just keep looking, Scott, yeah. keep looking at me, okay? Because okay. I'll scream. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, these are the first half box scores. All right, let me, uh, let me run through a couple quick items so that we're ready to go. I think Creighton is on their way. If you haven't already, let's go ahead and silence uh, all your electronic devices. As you know, we've got the NCAA Digital Hub that um, has quotes provided by ASAP and video from Hammond Communications. Unless you are affiliated with the school, there is no video allowed to be taken in here in this press conference room, only photos. Um, and uh, we do have a audience with us on Zoom. When we get to the Q&A, we'll uh, look to take as many questions as possible. Those of you that are joining on Zoom, if you have a question, please reuse the raised hand function. I believe Creighton is ready to join us up here on the dais. All right, let's go ahead and get started with introductions. It's my pleasure to welcome to the dais Creighton head coach, Jim Flannery, as well as student athletes, Morgan Molly and Tatum Rembaugh. Good, you got it. Thank you. Uh, let's start with an opening statement, please, coach. Yeah, this team 
just continues to amaze me, and um, we're so proud of, you know, how they've grown, what what kind of fight that they have, and and how they play for each other, and just couldn't be more proud of them, the the growth that we've seen. Um, you know, I told a lot of people we were we were four and eight at the end of January a year ago. We had won four games, and we had had obviously a lot of COVID. But it started last year. I felt like we, we really got a lot better. People like Morgan, who were freshmen, um, got, got experience, and we got in the NIT. And, uh, you know, I just, we came back hungry, and uh, we didn't get out of the blocks. We lost two of our first three. Um, but, uh, you know, we've been a good practice team. And I think when you, when you practice well, and we've been healthy, I think that's a huge part. We've, we had, we had, we've had a really good practice situation this year in terms of people being healthy. And, and I think when you do that, you can get better. But, uh, you know, uh, Iowa State, uh, congratulations to them. They had a, a great year. They're a great program, a, a tremendous team. We have a lot of respect for them. Uh, but, uh, you know, about these two, you know, somebody somebody referenced Morgan as a, as a bench player the other day. And I said, that's kind of an insult. I know. <laughs> I know she was sixth player of the year, but she's she's not a bench player. We just don't start her, but she's on the floor a lot. <laughs> and uh, and then Tatum was incredible tonight. I mean, uh, you know, um, the the third quarter, uh, her confidence and, and and her ability to make the plays that she did really kind of flipped the game. I felt like we had a, we had a good run at the end of the second quarter to get ourselves in at, into a tie at half, and I felt that really helped us but uh you know we're gonna we're gonna get ready for south carolina uh starting in the morning and and uh we're gonna swing away we're gonna we're gonna prepare the right way and and then we're gonna come swing away sunday night as a reminder we're gonna start this first portion of the q a for the student athletes only if you have a question please let us get a microphone to you give us your name and affiliation and who your question is directed to we're gonna start over here on the far left side third, uh, fourth row. Aaron Beard with the AP, this is from Morgan. I guess you were doing a TV interview at midcourt, I think, and you got doused pretty good. Most people hold the water until the locker room. Uh, just kind of what was your what was your emotions kind of in the celebration and then getting doused on the court? Um, it was so fun, I guess. That's kind of a tradition now that we keep winning. Um, <laughs> but um, I just love playing with this team and it makes the celebrations that much better. Take our next question right here to our left, second row. Uh, Gabe Ibrahim, Jays 24-7. Uh, so like in that third quarter into the fourth quarter, it kind of felt like you guys could do you know, whatever you wanted. They would switch, you guys would slip, they would bring nail help, you guys would pop out. What, what was that process like just on the court? Like do you guys have to communicate that stuff when you see it or do you guys just like have it built in to you know, what you're doing out there? Tatum, can you start please? Um, we have a lot of freedom in practice, and we practice at motion almost every single day. Um, so I feel like it's a little rough, like when you're in June and July trying to figure each other out. But once you start to build that chemistry, you kind of know who's going to back cut, who's going to curl, who's going to bump and pop, and who you want to bump and pop. Um, so it definitely comes with a lot of practice. Morgan? I would just say we have players who make plays. <laughs> We'll go right down here to the front, off to our right. Uh, Joe Nugent, W-O-W-T, uh, Morgan, speaking of making plays. I don't know if any of your three-pointers that you made, you were actually close to the line. They seemed like they were all deep, and I don't know if any of them even touched the rim either. I mean, how did it feel? I mean, you were ready to let it go. Yeah, um, that's kind of what I'm used to, just coming in off the bench, just letting it fly. Um, my teammates got me great looks, um, just kind of read the defense, and... You know, once the first one or two go down, uh, it gives me a lot of confidence to keep letting it go. Move back over here to our left, third row. Uh, Ellie French with KETV. Um, Tatum, obviously this is your last season, and that's getting, it's, it getting extended now. Uh, how does that just feel? I cannot be more grateful that this season has gotten to be extended two more weeks um, just from the Big East tournament. and. Um, these girls have made it so worth it on and off the court. They're definitely my best friends, and 
I, I wouldn't want to go through this with anyone else. Okay, we'll go back to our left a little further back, Andrea. Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com. As the final seconds were ticking off, can you just describe your emotions? I mean, the parents and fans behind me were crying. What was it like for you guys? Morgan, you start. Um, it's just unreal. It, this whole, the past two weeks hasn't felt real, but um, it's been amazing, you know, to have that lead going in the fourth quarter and do enough to stick it out and have Tatum make great, um, make those free throws at the end and defensive stops were huge. Um, this is just a great experience. Come back down again to the uh, second row on our left. Uh, so after you guys lost in the in the Big East tournament, you know, did did you think this was going to happen? Like, what was your mentality then, and, and how did it take you to now? Tatum, you start. That loss hurt um, in the Big East tournament. It's really hard to play a team three times, but that was definitely a game that we shouldn't have lost. And so I think everyone came back from spring break really eager and really ready to go because um, we know how good we are and we knew how good we were back then. Um, so I think we had to change our mindset a little bit to prepare ourselves a little bit better. Morgan? Yeah, that one stung. But um, I think we came back stronger. And we really dialed in on you know what each of our roles are. And we just kind of focused on meshing and making a run because um, we knew that we could. Let's go back up to Andrea. Tatum, as a quick follow-up to that, your parents and, and family were very emotional. Can you just describe what it means for this program, this fan base, everybody associated with the magnitude of this win? Our parents are amazing. Um, as you guys can see, they travel so well, and they all stay at the same hotel, and they all go out to eat before the games, and they hang out after the games. Um, so it really is just one big family here with a lot of love. Take our last question for our student athletes right here in the third row, a little off to our left. Hi, this is for both of you guys. It seemed like around, I want to say like the middle of the third quarter, you guys went on a little run, forced Iowa State to call a timeout. You guys were celebrating and really hyped up as the timeout was called, you're going to your bench. At what point in the game did you guys really like smell blood in the water? Morgan? I would say, yeah, in, in the middle of the third quarter, um, we had, our offense is working really well, and a lot of people step up and hit a lot of hit some shots. Um, and we um, started rebounding the ball better on the defensive end, and that was, I think, kind of how they hung in the game, uh, second chance points. Um, so yeah, right around there. Tatum, the last word's yours. I feel like we're an emotional team, and we're going to celebrate who deserves to be celebrated. Um, so when someone hits a big three and we go into a timeout, we're going to show them all the love. Congratulations to both of you. You guys can head back to your locker room. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's go ahead and start the Q&A with Coach. Again, give us your hand. We'll start over here. Aaron on our left. Aaron Beard with the AP. Uh, we were asking the players about their emotions, but what were yours like when the horn finally sounded? You could stop worrying about this game. You went over to the crowd and gave a couple thumbs up, but what were your emotions after many times of trying to get to this point and now you're past it? Yeah, it's uh, – I don't know. I just I, – I've enjoyed this team so much that it's – you know, I told him, you know, you want to keep advancing because that's the goal, but I also want to just keep coaching this team. So that's kind of what I was thinking is just – I just love coaching this team because I never – you know, it's different people, different nights. Like I said, I mean, you know, we had 30 bench, you know, bench points tonight, and that's typical of us. We don't – you know, it's, you know, Emma Ronsick's our leading scorer, and I didn't play her in the fourth quarter tonight. And, uh, you know, when because I didn't trust her, it was because I trusted some other people. Peyton Brodsky, you know, was unbelievable tonight. I thought she was, she's played the best basketball of, of her career this year. Um, um, and, uh, you know, we just have different people. You know, Molly Mogensen, I thought, <coughs> Uh, was was really solid, and uh, you know, and then we got some people who don't get to play who are super unselfish. So it's, I think it's about you know just continuing to play, and and what a great opportunity you know Sunday night to play South Carolina. I mean that's, you know, 
you know, as, after watching them play, um, we came out to the bench and we were watching Iowa State in front of us warm up and us on the other end warm up and you know, we all seemed so small. <laughs> I was like, they're post play, you know, it's just, it's, it'll be different. I mean, we'll have to, we'll have our work cut out for us, but uh, just the opportunity to keep coaching and just so grateful. You know, Tatum mentioned our parents. I mean, it's such a, we're a small, smaller school and, and, and our, I, you know, I think when you're a women's basketball coach, you get maybe just a, you, you give yourself a little bit more access to parents because like she said, they, they're in the same hotel and, you know, they're, they're a part of it. And uh, so I'm, I mean, I'm super happy for our players, but I know, I know what kind of sacrifices their parents made to get them to this point. And that's, that's so cool. I mean, I just, the, the, the images I had in my head after we beat Iowa were of our players hugging their parents. And that's what's really cool about, you know, where I am right now in terms of, you know, viewing what just happened. Go ahead, take our next question on the other side of the aisle, about six rows back. Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com. Can you just describe the composure of your team late in the game? Iowa State's battling back. You make your free throws and you're able to seal it. Uh, better than their coaches. I got a little, <laughs> I got a little animated a couple times. Um, yeah, good. I mean, it, it, you know, when we put Tatum and Molly on the floor together, now we have two ball handlers. It, it helps us and and. Uh, you know, we they downsized and went small, and they, they did that a lot during the game, and we downsized um, really a lot in the second half. And then down the stretch, we were playing five guards too because we had it, felt like we had a big enough lead um, as long as we didn't give up threes and as long as we didn't turn the ball over, we were in good shape. And then, you know, the other part of that was we made some free throws, you know. Um, Tatum stepped up and made them. Lauren made a couple. So... Um, yeah, I think it was a little bit, you know, part of it's, you know, Tatum being a fifth year and a couple of our kids who are just kind of steady and flatliners. And then, um, you know, just I thought going small where we had a ball handling team on the floor where we, you know, where you, you look like you're composed because you're, you're not sped up as opposed to if we'd had a bigger lineup on the floor. Right down here in the front, second row. Uh, Coach, I asked the players about what happened after that Seton Hall loss, and I want to ask you, you know, what, what's, what were you feeling then, and then what's changed since then to get you guys to this point? Sure. Well, first of all, Seton Hall's a really good basketball team. They're in the final eight of the NIT, and, you know, we had had a, a double overtime game with them about two weeks before the conference tournament, so it's not... There's no shame in losing to them, um, but I, I don't know. I think the newness of the tournament helps. I, I really believe we're, you know, from a style standpoint, we're just a little different. I mean, you know, when you talk about what we, what we do on offense, we're, we're, we're a little different than what most people see, and I think that helps us in a, in a tournament format where they only have X number of days to prepare, and they're trying to find you know, film maybe of teams that, you know, play like us. And, and so I think that's helped us. And once you win one, your confidence is, is for sure greater. So, I mean, we've had, we've had three tight games. And so, so there's some good fortune in winning too. It's not, you know, the Colorado game was tighter than the final score. Went down to the last two, three minutes. Obviously, Iowa went down to the final possession. And today, you know, we had a little separation, but not, not a ton. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think. I don't know. I think we're. I think we're. What I what I love about this team is our. I mean, our sophomore class is really good. I mean, our three leading scorers are in our sophomore class, but our upperclassmen provide so much. And tonight, Tatum was a scorer, but she doesn't have to be. Um, but I think we've got that that really good combination of of youthful enthusiasm, and they don't know any better, and then good leaders who kind of guide them and reel them in when they try to get a little too um, either emotional or, you know, you know, maybe aren't quite as focused. So that, that, that to me has been, has been impressive. 
Time for two more. I know who you are. We're going to take one right here, third row back, a little bit towards the middle. Yep. Thanks. I oh, forgot to identify myself. M. Adler with the next. Um, I just want to. So Iowa State infamously has a unique fan environment for their games. Yeah. Especially the, these kinds of games. Is there a way you mentally or emotionally prepare your players to, to deal with that and play through it? Well, it certainly helped us to play in Iowa City last weekend in front of 15,000. So I think that was a was a, a help. And I, you know, I thought it was great. A lot of the South, I know North Carolina men played right after their women, so I didn't see a lot of Carolina blue. Um, but uh, I thought a lot of the South Carolina fans um, stayed around. That was nice. I thought the atmosphere. I thought that helped make the atmosphere. But yeah, I mean, Bill's done an incredible job at Iowa State and what the, what they've built in terms of the success of the program and 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 how they draw and how they're supported um is 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 really impressive so we um i don't know but our players have 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 been in that environment some and and i just think they we were ready to play last question on the aisle over here flan it was a tie game at the half what was your message to the girls before they went back out on the court yeah that uh that we can play better like i you know i felt like we turned the ball over too much in the first quarter and then the second quarter we didn't defensive rebound and so i know that uh i think we had five turnovers in the first quarter 10 for the game so much better job the last three quarters and then we gave up eight oh boards offensive boards in the first half and only three in the second half so we I, we cleaned those up and that's why i said i said we we're tied and we, we can play better. We can play, you know, quite a bit better. I said we're, you know, and, and the nerves are hopefully a little bit behind us. But, you know, and I felt, I mean, Iowa State probably felt like they could play better too. They missed some open threes in that first half. But, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, other than that, it was it was just a few tactical things. But, you know, a few things that they were running that, that, that we didn't defend very well. And, you know, just trying to get them to slow down a little bit. Uh, offensively, but I thought we had done that in the second quarter much better than the first. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Sounds good. All right, it's my pleasure to introduce Iowa State head coach Bill Fenley, as well as Emily Ryan and Ashley Jones. Coach, when you're ready, an opening statement. Yeah, uh, two quick points. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the NCAA and certainly the people of Greensboro on behalf of everyone in, at Iowa State. The phenomenal, phenomenal tournament as always. And it was an honor to, to be here uh, and really thank everyone. And then secondly, certainly want to congratulate Creighton uh, they played a great game. Uh, we we knew going into this game, it's a basketball is a make shot, miss shot game, especially with these two teams. 
and they made a lot of tough shots tonight. And unfortunately, we couldn't get the ball in the basket when we needed it. So uh, we certainly congratulate them at their class act. Coach Flan does it right. Uh, very impressed with how they do it. They're, they're run their program. So, uh, and lastly, uh, couldn't be more proud of our team. Uh, obviously, tonight hurts. Obviously, tonight is disappointing. And it should be. If you invest in something in your life and it doesn't go your way, you should be disappointed. But uh, what, what they accomplished is, is amazing, and we'll celebrate that at another time. But uh, it was an honor to, to say that I, was, I coached at Iowa State this year, and amazing young people, amazing. As a reminder, we will start with questions for our student athletes first. If you've got a question, let us get you the microphone, name and affiliation, and who your question is directed to. Start right here on the aisle to our left. Aaron Beard with the AP. This is for Ashley. What were they doing defensively to try to make things difficult on you, at least from a shooting from the field standpoint? Yeah, uh, they did a great job defensively, just uh, staying on us, kind of knowing our personnel and how to guard. I think they did a really good job, and that kind of helped them out. Great. We'll come right down here to the very front. Tommy Birch, Des Moines Register. How did you guys feel late in the fourth quarter when you were kind of making that run and getting some momentum? Let's start um, with you, uh, Emily. Yeah, um, at that point we were clawing ourselves back into the game and um, we made some plays that we needed to make to get ourselves in a position to have a chance at it and ultimately we weren't able to make quite enough of them to uh, get the win. Ashley. Yeah, like Emily said, we just had to keep fighting and clawing our way back into the game, and uh, we weren't able to get it done, but uh, we kept competing. Take another question from right down here in front. Coach Fenley had talked about just how proud he is to have coached you guys, and you know, eventually you guys will celebrate all you've, you've accomplished. What do you guys think about what you have done this year and, and accomplished as a, as a team? Ashley. Yeah, I mean, we had a really great season. Uh, it didn't end the way we wanted it to. But uh, looking back, we uh, all stuck together. And, uh, I mean, it was a great team. Uh, we all stuck together and we're very connected, which uh, makes it a lot more fun when you can win and uh, be this close. Emily. Yeah, um, going to practice every day was so fun. Um, <laughs> Really fun team to be around, and um, just disappointed we can't come back tomorrow and get to work. Take our next question from the third row in the middle. Hi, this is just for Ashley. Do you know yet whether or not you're going to come back next year or enter the draft? Uh, I haven't thought about that yet. Uh, I'll decide soon. Any further questions for our student athletes? Thank you all very much. Congratulations on Thank a great you. season. At this time, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions for Coach. Start over here on the left, Aaron. Aaron Beard with the AP. What, what happened in the third quarter, uh, I guess, with defense? I mean, some of it's them making shots, but obviously I'm sure you weren't doing some things you wanted to do defensively either. No, we, we got mismatched a couple times. Uh, you know, they hit a couple. Uh, you know, Rimbo hit Banks one in. And she made 19 threes all year, and they hit a tough. We guarded an inbounds play wrong at the end, and they, they stuck a three at the end of the shot clock. So, um, and then we we had we tried to go smaller to keep the ball in front of us, and, and that, that was a struggle. We, we had real matchup problems, and we weren't scoring enough to offset it. Sometimes you got to score when you're not guarding right. But uh, yeah, third quarter we didn't. We really struggled to to even get any kind of flow defensively. We tried a lot of different things, but. To their credit, they, they always had an answer for it. Right down here in the front. Tommy Birch, Des Moines Register. Bill, I know you had said you're very proud of coach this team. What is it about this team that has made you so proud to coach them? And uh, when you eventually do start thinking about what they accomplished, what are you most proud of? Uh, well, I, I think what Emily referred to is it was a group that was was really fun to be around. They showed up. They did what they were supposed to do. Uh, we talked uh, at length uh, about the Iowa State way of doing things. And, and coming out of COVID, 
you didn't know what was going to happen. Everyone's like, oh, this is great. Well, sometimes when teams are together, it's not great. Uh, this team, it turned out to be an unbelievable thing. And the disappointment of how last year ended motivated them all. Uh, and I thought they handled themselves all year. Uh, you know, you win 28 games, you get to the Sweet 16. Um, and I think it was the team, Tommy, as you know, I think our fans loved watching this team play because uh, they can tell that they're connected and they play the game the right way. So, um, yeah, it's like Em said, it's hard tonight. And, uh, but I could not imagine being more proud of, of what they've done and how they've done it. Go back here in the front. Does it kind of excite you to knowing that, like, okay, it's a good core coming back to? I mean, does that maybe soften tonight a little bit, knowing that you're going to still get the, the chance to coach a lot of them moving forward? Uh, yeah. No, I, obviously, I, I think I'm not really I, – I should have an answer to that. I, I can't process next year yet. But, um, but uh, you know, when you, when you have Emily Ryan and Lexi Donarski – you know, obviously, Ash has not made her decision. But M and Lex, that's a great way to start a team. And there'll be some work to do, obviously. But, um, you know, it's hard uh, to see them, you know, compete to that level. And, you know, everyone's going to lose their last game in this tournament except for one. And we all know that. But when it happens, it's sudden. And, and my grandson, um, my grandson, Will, is seven years old. And, he, he loves our team, and he walked into the coach's locker room sobbing. And uh, I, I spent a lot of time trying to console him. And, you know, if you don't care, you know, that's okay. But I told him, I said, you know, Will, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. And we're going to smile big when we get home. We're going to take our next question uh, from Zoom. Matt, uh, go ahead and ask your question. It looks like we've got a issue here. Any other questions in the audience? All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations on appreciate a great all your time, especially uh, our folks from home covering us all year. You did a great job. Thank you all.